That's quite big. Impressive. Hey everyone, what's up? So this is my Dodecagon project, which is a huge nano leaf like device, which is made from combining 12 PCBs together at a certain angle to make a Dodecagon shape. The goal for making this project was simple. I wanted to make a huge nano leaf like setup with PCBs. Previously, I've made this similar version, which was small. So I wanted to enlarge that project. So I created this Dodecagon PCB, which is the version 2 of that previous project. You can download the code and other details about this project from this project's page. Link is in video description. Now without wasting any more time, let's get started. PCBs which were provided by PCBWay, WS2812B LEDs, 100NF capacitor, ESP12F module, AMS1117 3.3V voltage regulator, 10UF capacitor, 100UF capacitor, 0 ohm resistance, 10 kilo ohm resistance, female header pin, THT micro USB port, 10 UF 16 volt aluminium capacitor, solder paste, 3D printed soldering jig, SMT hot plate reflow. This project utilizes two PCBs which are these two. One is the main board which is this and the another one is this PCB which only contains 7 WS2812 LEDs. This is the main board which contains the ESP12F module along with 7 WS2812B LEDs. The main board generates the signal for the first WS2812B LED through the NZR communication mode. The first pixel obtained the data from ESP8266 via this DN port and then send the 24-bit data to the second pixel via its D out port. The main board contains 7 pixels, so when the data reaches to the 7th pixel, we add another PCB on the main board, which adds 7 more pixels to this setup. The data then transfer from the first PCB to the second PCB, and so on. This is the second PCB that we gonna need. It doesn't have an ESP12F module soldered on it, it's just a breakout for 7 RGB LEDs. My idea here is to solder 12 PCBs together in this arrangement. Each PCB will get soldered to each other at an angle of 150 degrees, just like a classic dodecagon shape. So overall this project required 12 PCBs, one main board and 11 LED breakout boards. But buying two different PCBs will cost more. So I prepared this setup in such a way that if I need to use the ESP12F on the bottom side, I have to add a 0 ohm resistor here, which connects the D in port of the first LED with the GPIO12. Because of this, we only need to add ESP12F to the one board and the rest of the PCBs can be directly soldered with the WS2812B LEDs without changing anything. Here's the schematic of this PCB. After preparing the PCB for this project, I sent this to PCBWay for samples. Why PCBWay? Well, because their service is top notch and great. I placed the order and received these cool looking PCBs in just a week. I have to say, the PCB that I received were nice as expected. PCBWay, you guys rocks. 
PCB Way offer large variety of services which include PCB assembly, flexible PCBs and even 3D printing. Not just any 3D printing, metal 3D printing. Check out PCB Way if you need great PCB service for less cost. After receiving the PCBs, it's time to start the assembly process. To prepare the first PCB, which would be this main board, I first applied solder paste to each component's pad, like this. And then pick and place each component one by one, like this. After this, I turned on my DIY SMT soldering hot plate, which is a ghetto hot plate for reflowing PCBs. I placed the PCB on it and let the solder paste melt. This whole process took hardly 5 minutes and the end result was this PCB. Now we need to add ESP12F on the bottom side with the soldering iron because we cannot use our hot plate for this task. We first add ESP12F in its place and then add AMS1117 voltage regulator along with 10 UF capacitor and 100 UF capacitor and also 0 ohms resistance. Then we add THT components which are the main power switch programming header pin and this THT micro USB port. In the PCB design, I made a mistake. The micro USB pad are right now on the top layer of this PCB. It needed to be on the bottom side. Now because of this mistake, when I place the USB on the bottom side, its polarity inverts and the positive became negative and the negative became positive. To correct this error, I just cut down both of its track and soldered a wire in this arrangement. We only have to do this change in a single PCB as this is only for supplying power to the main board. After preparing the main board, we need to make other 11 boards which will only have 7 ws 2812 12 b LEDs. And 3 10NF capacitor each. We first gather all the components that we need, which are 77 WS2812B 20 LEDs and 33 10NF capacitors. We start first by placing the solder paste to each component pad one by one. For such a task, a stencil is mandatory, which I didn't get because I'm such an idiot. Anyways, this project required a total of 12 PCBs and 11 of them are breakout board for ws 2812 b LEDs. So we need to reflow all the 11 PCBs one by one by first applying the solder paste to each component pad and then placing the LEDs in their assigned place and then reflowing this PCB all together one by one. This will take an eternity to finish, but after few hours, you will get these cool looking PCBs. Now, before the final assembly, we need to first check each PCB as they might not work because I probably have not applied solder paste properly to each pads. Note to self, use stencil in these kind of projects. To test each board, I prepared this setup, which consists of an Arduino Nano connected with a push button. I have uploaded a button cycler sketch, which changes the color of WS2812B LEDs on button press. We have to manually solder VCC ground and D in port to 5V ground and D6 of the Arduino Nano board. Then we provide supply with a micro USB cable and then press the button. If the PCB is shorted, the setup won't work, and if it does work, 
This means our setup is perfectly soldered and now we need to remove the wire from this PCB and test the other PCBs. This will also take time. But after checking all the boards, all that left to do is the final assembly. The shape dodecagon has 12 sides. The internal angle between two sides is 150 degrees. To solder this setup at a proper 150 degree angle, I modeled this jig in Fusion 360 which hold two PCBs at an angle of 150 degrees. By putting the jig at the both side of two PCBs, we can securely connect two PCBs together and solder them by adding solder wire between their two soldering pads. This whole assembly process involved me putting two PCBs together and connected them by soldering their pads together. No glue is required here. The PCBs are being held in their place by solder joints. To give this structure more adhesion, I soldered 0.8mm wire on the outward side of the two joints to give this structure more strength from the outside part. And our setup is finally ready. 
and it's huge like really huge making this kind of stuff with pcb is possible but it's not durable this structure is so fragile that if i drop it from this table the solder joint might tear off and this huge dodecagon will be destroyed anyways let's flash some sweet sweet code in this setup now I will first upload this code to this setup which is actually an hello world code of WS2812B LEDs. For uploading the code, I will be using my Node MCU programmer which is actually a Node MCU whose ESP12F module has been powered down and we are using its CP2102 chip. For detailed version, check out my previous video about this process. The Node MCU setup has these breakout points that will connect it with the ESP12F module. 3 volt to 3 volt, ground to ground, reset to reset, GPIO 0 to GPIO 0, D3 is the GPIO 0 on Node MCU, TX to TX and RX to RX. I added jumper wire between enable and ground pin of Node MCU. This will turn off the ESP12F of the Node MCU and our external ESP12F will get connected with the Node MCU CP2102 chip. Connect the Node MCU programmer with the ESP12F board. Open Arduino IDE and plug the USB on the Node MCU. Then go to the tool menu and select the Node MCU board that you are using. Select the right port and hit upload. After uploading, go to the serial monitor and hit the reset button on the Node MCU setup. And as you can see, our setup has been connected with the smartphone. Now copy this IP address and open it in your web browser and bang, our setup is now working. So here's our dodecagon setup, alive and running. It's being powered by a 5 volt 2 ampere charger and yes, it required a 2 ampere charger as it's drawing a lot of current than a regular NeoPixel ring. If this video was fun then do not forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks PCBWay for providing PCBs for this project. Check out PCBWay for getting great PCB service for less price. And I'll see you guys with the next video.